Hello, Mark Fletcher back with you again. After my last video where I discussed building checklists you'll actually use, I liked the idea so much I decided to rewrite the checklist for the SR22. Now one of the things that keeps me from using a checklist in X-Plane is having checklists that you don't normally want to see like emergency checklists and so forth and then having to page through all of those checklists to get to the one that you're interested in. It would be great if X checklists had a tabbing feature where all of your checklists are displayed in tabs and you would just click on the tab for the checklist that you're interested in seeing. Short of that, X checklist does provide a condition based continue command that allows the normally sequential sequencing of checklists to be dynamically changed based on the condition of a data ref. Before we get into that, let's look at the overall structure of our checklist file. From my previous video, I start with a splash page which contains a summary of the information contained in all the other checklists. And if I choose, I can simply reference this splash page and not use the checklist. After the splash page, I put all my emergency checklists. And then after the emergency checklist, I put my normal checklists. I use five emergency checklists. Power loss after takeoff, power loss in flight, engine fire and flight, emergency descent, and force landing. My normal checklists are pre-flight, starting engine, starting hot engine, started floating engine, before taxi, run up, takeoff, climb, cruise, descend, before landing, landing, after landing, and shutdown. And I'm trying very hard to keep this brief and not have any checklists that are unnecessary and make them as brief as possible. Which again is in the spirit of building checklists that I'm actually going to use. So in order to hide the emergency checklist during normal operations, I place a checkbox at the end of the splash page that if I check takes me to the first normal checklist pre-flight. But if I actually wanted to go to the emergency checklist, I would press the next checklist button from the splash page and that will take me to power loss after takeoff, the first of the emergency checklists. Let's take a look at the code for that. So here's the code for my splash page. And at the end you can see two lines. This first one, SW item creates a checkbox that I label go to and when you check that box it goes to the checklist named pre-flight. If instead of checking the box you choose to press the next checklist button it will fall through to the next checklist which is the first emergency checklist power loss after takeoff. It's here that you find the other four emergency checklists which you can sequence through using the next and previous checklist buttons. So if you always use the checklist and never use the next and previous checklist buttons, you'll never see these emergency checklists. I think that's pretty slick. Another place in which I change the sequencing order is in power loss and flight. In most cases we end up here because of running out of fuel or some sort of major engine trouble. Consequently the next likely checklist would be force landing so I sequence to that checklist following this one. Following similar logic in this engine fire and flight I branch to emergency descent since obviously you want to get down as quickly as possible. Now as you can see it really is not necessary that I do this since emergency descent is the very next checklist in the list anyway. But if I was to change the order and move these around a little bit that could mess that up. So I just do that as a convention. And it makes sense that forced landing would be the next checklist following emergency descent. So I branch you to that one. Now let's take a look at the normal checklists and the first checklist is pre-flight and once that checklist is complete the next thing we need to do is start the engine. However there are three conditions the engine can be in so we need a way to determine if the engine is cold, hot, or flooded. To determine if the engine is hot we find a data ref that reports the cylinder head temperature and the pilot handbook tells us that if the engine temperature is above 150 degrees we need to use the hot start checklist. Again let's look at the code for this. 
Torx then provides a data ref for cylinder head temperature called CHT under bar F. So we can construct a continue command that tests this data ref for values greater than 150 and branch to the checklist starting hot engine in that case. If the engine is not hot, then we just fall through to the next checklist, which is starting cold engine. Now to deal with a flooded engine, at the end of both the cold and the hot start checklists, if we find that the engine RPM data ref is zero, then we know that the engine failed to start, so we branch to the flooded start checklist. Finally, at the end of starting flooded engine, since there are no more engine checklists, we simply branch to the before taxi checklist. Okay, well let's hop in the plane and see how this works. Here's my splash page and I have all my vital information like fuel capacity, consumption, and I have all my V-speeds here and my various flight profiles, takeoff, climb, cruise, landing. And I want to draw your attention to the couple of lines at the bottom of this page. All my checklists have this format. The checkbox labeled Go To branches to a particular checklist when you click the box. This particular go-to goes straight to the pre-flight checklist, while others will dynamically choose a checklist based on a data ref value. The second line labeled Next tells us what checklist we'll go to if we press the Next Checklist button, in this case Power Loss After Takeoff, which is the first of our emergency checklists. These tasks are accomplished with three lines of code. This first line, SW Item Underbar C, produces a checkbox, which causes a pause in the automatic sequencing and provides an opportunity for you to press the next checklist button, which would take you to power loss after takeoff. Clicking the checkbox causes X checklist to drop down to the SW continue line, which will take you to the pre-flight checklist. So clicking the go to box will take us to the pre-flight checklist. And we have effectively jumped around all of the emergency checklists and we won't see them at all. Once we're done with pre-flight checklist, we face a decision. Do we need a cold start or a hot start checklist? By referencing the cylinder head temperature data ref, we decide which checklist is appropriate and branch accordingly. So in this case, since I had just started the simulator, the engine is cold. You can clearly see the temperature is in the area of 60 degrees. So clicking the go to box will take us to the starting cold engine checklist. So following this procedure, we'll attempt to start the engine. The checkbox at the end of this page labeled engine start attempt when checked will determine if the engine started or not by referencing the data ref engine speed RPM. Well we obviously started our engine here, but we can verify it and we see that we're well above zero for our RPMs. So clicking this checkbox now should take us to the before taxi checklist and had the engine not started we would be directed to the flooded start checklist which we'll see a little bit later. So I've been setting up my navigation and other things and the engine's been running now for about 20 minutes and of course I have to make a pit stop so I'm gonna have to shut the engine down. Okay, with that taken care of, now we're facing having to start a hot engine. Okay, so I've worked my way through the pre-flight checklist now and I'm facing this cold or hot engine go-to. So looking at the cylinder head temperature in the data ref editor, we see that our temperature is about 212 degrees, well above the requirement for a hot start. 
So when we click the go to button it takes us to starting hot engine. Yay! So I'm going to work through this starting hot engine checklist but for demonstration purposes I'm going to not start the engine so that when we get to this final checkbox engine start attempt the engine will not be running therefore the RPMs will be zero and it should take us to starting flooded engine. And by the way I've had great luck with these two checklists starting flooded engine and starting hot engine. I'm tempted to go into detail, but we'll refrain since this video is about writing checklists. I'll just say that of the several versions that I found, these have worked every single time. Okay, I'd call that a good failed attempt at starting the engine. So as you can see I'm at the end of the checklist here and I'm looking at the RPMs data ref and it's zero so we should now go to starting flooded engine when I click this engine start attempt checkbox. And so we do. Now once we get to the end of the starting flooded engine checklist we simply go to before taxi because it's assumed that our engine is running now. Now before I wrap things up I want to show you one of the emergency checklists. This is the one you'll probably see the most. Power loss and flight. So let's say we're in cruise here and we've just finished our cruise checklist and we suddenly run out of fuel because our co-pilot forgot to remind us at the last stop to get some more gas. Now the first thing we want to do is reach for the checklist. Now in the real airplane it's probably in the side pocket or maybe the console. But in this context, reach for a checklist means to press the reload checklist button. So, accessing the emergency checklist consists of three steps. One, reload the checklist, that is press the reload button. Two, press the next checklist button, which takes you to the splash page. And then the third step is to press the next checklist button again, which takes you to the first emergency checklist. Then it's a matter of paging through the checklist using the next checklist button until we find the one we want. In our case it's that second checklist, power loss and flight. Not an ideal setup, but a lot better than having to page through all the checklists of your entire file. And since we only have five emergency checklists it doesn't take you long to find the one you're looking for. Let's see how this works. So here we are in cruise. Yikes, we've lost the engine. We reach for the checklist. Next checklist. Next checklist again. Power loss after takeoff. That's not it. Next checklist again. Okay, there it is. We work through the checklist. And here we are at the go to. Notice this go to will take us to the force landing checklist which is probably the one that we want. So we check that box rather than continue to page through the other checklists. So we continue to work through these emergency checklists until we've either resolved the emergency or we're on the ground. I think that just about does it. In this video you've seen the power of X checklists continue command and how you can add some pretty cool dynamic behavior to your checklists. I hope you find this intriguing and helpful. If you'd like to have a copy of this checklist you'll find a link to it in the description. And as always please press that like button if you've enjoyed this. Subscribe if you haven't. If you've already subscribed I appreciate that. And most of all thank you for watching.